time with Mr. Lamada. He will be starting soon. Oh, oh, oh. Story time with Mr. Lamada. Where all your dreams come true. Oh, oh, oh. It brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. Won't you start all the reading? I just can't wait to be here. Story time with Mr. Lamada. It will be starting soon. Oh. Story time with Mr. Lamada. Where all your dreams come true. Oh. He brings to life your favorite stories with a great big smile. You won't leave lonely. You won't just start all reading. I just can't wait to be here. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Storytime. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy Wednesday. Yes, middle of the week. Thank you so much for joining in wherever you are today. I hope that your morning has been a good one. If you are further along in your day, I hope that it has been a good day so far. And of course, if it's not going too great, well, we wish you a good turnaround just around the bend for sure. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime absolutely thrilled to be here with you as always and we do have a wonderful book to share together and i'm excited for this one we haven't brought this one back to story time in a long time but we are reading on wings of words the extraordinary life of emily dickinson and you know you're in for a treat just beautiful, beautiful words to serve her today. And this one is written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrations by Becca Standlander. And so good morning to you. Welcome. I hope you're ready for that one. Thank you so much for joining in. And of course, if you have a copy at home, grab it now so you can read along and follow along as we read here on Storytime. Thank you so much for joining in. Please let us know where you're joining in from and who is joining in with you this morning whether it's your 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 cat let them come and join us like maple does out there in kentucky or whether you're joining us from different parts of the world please let us know where you are let us know who is joining in with you and of course if you're here alone why not welcome welcome to story time thank you so much for joining in and of course if you're joining us later for the recordings thank you for joining in and remember to to share story time and of course let your friends know we are here enjoying books together keep sending us your recommendations and we're working to bring those live to story time and of course remember too that you can catch story time at storytime with mr limada.com at storytime with mr limada on facebook and youtube thank you so much for joining in today i am excited to be here with you as always and remember too that we have many many events coming your way may will be very busy uh to kick us off too on may 11th we will have marietta apollonia and jack the library cat they will be here live on story time doing art with us and learning with us of course so join us then and uh, i'm excited for for marietta's visit here to story time thank you so much for joining in absolutely excited for that one mark your calendars yes indeed and also on uh, June 3rd, we will be at Children's Fairyland. Yes, Children's Book Festival will be happening. Join us there. And um, lots and lots of creatives will be there, including some of your favorites for sure. And um, yeah, come on out. Come on out and have fun with us. If your friends who are in the Bay, your friends who are in Oakland, let them know that June 3rd, the party is at fairyland right in the heart of Oakland. Thank you so much for joining in and today's poem as we continue poem poem of the day for this week this entire week as we continue to commemorate um, National Poetry Month which is April and this one today is from James Baldwin and this one is called Amen. No I don't feel death coming. I feel death going having thrown up his hands for the moment. I feel like I know him better than I did. Those arms held me for a while. And when we meet again, there will be that secret knowledge between us. Yes, 
a very philosophical one indeed i hope you enjoy it and um yeah lots more if you have any poems that you would like us to feature here on story time or oh, send us send them quickly send them today so maybe we can put them in consideration for thursday or friday otherwise we'll go with the ones that we have lined up already thank you so much for joining in please remember to jack the library cat coming and uh, pre-orders available too and also ask for it at your local library yes ask for it at your local library use those resources thank you so much for being here let us see who is with us this morning ready to enjoy the wonderful story good morning to you how are you doing today owen <laughs> yes i would love to see those uh, those toys owen so you know send send pictures right now we just say send pictures to my to my to my messages and i will gladly you know just look at them and admire and of course um hopefully soon we'll be able to meet maybe in person who knows so let's keep holding on to that but please please share pictures of those uh toys that you have what's your favorite one thank you so much for joining in and i hope that you have a wonderful day today and um thank you for joining in story time thank you for making me smile owen out there in massachusetts christy Costa, good morning to you. How are you doing today? Thank you for being here. Good morning to you, Doreen. Thank you so much for joining in from El Salvador. Well, thank you for being here. Good morning to you. I hope that you are having a wonderful time out there. I hope that you're okay. How's the weather like today? Thank you so much for joining in and good to see you here on Storytime. It has been a minute for sure, but hopefully you've been able to join us for the recordings. Thank you for being here. Good morning to you. Ari and of course Megan out there in Kentucky. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. Maple, how are you doing today as well? Thank you so much for joining in story time. I hope that you are well. Love, love, love to you out there in Kentucky. Thank you so much for joining in story time. Absolutely love it. Good morning to you as well, Sharon, Lungo, and Soraya. How are you doing right here in Oakland? Thank you so much for joining in. Please, please, please remember to. It's going to be um, war. It's going to get warmer as the day goes. We're looking at about seventy-five degrees out here in Oakland today. So carry your jackets, but don't leave them at school. Don't forget because we will take them off because it's gotten warmer and we'll forget. Take it off. Put it in your backpack or somewhere close so you can remember to take it with you. You'll need it the next morning. Thank you so much for joining in story time. Good morning to you, Pamela. Courtney, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining us. Braylon, Chad, and Tian, yes. Good morning to you out there in Nakitosh, Louisiana, where you say it is chilly today. Well, thank you so much for being here. We have just the book to warm you up today. This one coming in from um, Jennifer Byrne and Becca Stanland. And of course, we're reading this one with permission of the publishers, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. And this one is called On Wings of Words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson. And I will ask you this question before we read and then uh, before I come back and actually read the author's note. Um, what is poetry to you? something to think about. What is poetry to you? And then, of course, we'll read what um, Jennifer Byrne thinks poetry is. But of course, what is it to you? What? How do you express yourself when it comes to poetry? So think about that for a second, and then we'll come back and see, um, continue that conversation after we read our book. But today we do have On Wings of Words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson. Get ready for this one. Coming up very shortly, I'll catch you on the other side of this short break. And again, to remember, poem of the day today is this one from James Baldwin, and this one is called Amen, or Amen, right? <laughs> Depending on tomato, tomato, here we go. No, I don't feel death coming. I feel death going, having thrown up his arms for the moment. I feel like I know him better than I did. Those arms held me for a while, and when we meet again, there will be that sacred knowledge between us. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful poem indeed. I'll catch you on the other side of this short break. We're your attention tenders and you're listening to Storytime with Mr. Lamasa. 
Yes, catch um, Tune Tales with Kit and Tenders. Catch it. Very funny, very fun. So I hope that um, you're able to follow and um, listen in to their wonderful, wonderful podcast. All right, here we go. Today's book on wings of words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson. This one is written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrations by Becca Stanlander, and we're reading this one with permission of the publishers, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Here we go. <laughs> On Wings of Words, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson. Written by Jennifer Byrne, illustrations by Becca Stanlander. And we're reading this one with permission of the publishers, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Soft moonlit snow draped the Dickinson house in white. It reaches to the fence. It wraps it rail by rail till it is lost in fleeces. It flings a crystal veil. <laughs> oh. I just love Emily Dickinson's writing. It is just beautiful. Soft moonlit snow draped the Dickinson house in white. It reaches to the fence. It wraps it rail by rail till it is lost in fleeces. It flings a crystal veil. In a little room in the dark before dawn, a baby girl was born. Her parents celebrated the holiday they called Emily. <laughs> yes, in that little room in the dark before dawn, a baby girl was born. Her parents celebrated the holiday they called Emily. Emily met the world and began to explore. To little Emily, every bird, every flower, every bee or breeze or slant of light seemed to speak to her. She explored with her eyes, her ears, her thoughts and found new words for everything she was discovering. The bee is not afraid of me. I know the butterfly. The brooks laugh louder when I come. <laughs> yes, may you explore the world like this too. Emily met the world and began to explore. To little Emily, every bird, every flower, every bee or breeze or slant of light seemed to speak to her. She explored with her eyes, her ears, her thoughts and found new words for everything she was discovering. The bee is not afraid of me. I know the butterfly. The brooks laugh louder when I come. <laughs> when thunder crashed and lightning flashed, Emily got scared and called it the fire. Emily adored her older brother, Austin. She said, there was always such hurrah wherever he was. Ah, oh, yes, Emily adored her older brother, Austin. She said there was always such hurrah wherever he was. She loved her school friends, who she said were a warmth as near as if the sun were shining in your hand. <laughs> wow. She loved her school friends, who she said were a warmth as, as near as if the sun were shining in your hand. Picture that. <laughs> 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 
Every day, Emily's life rippled with new joys and swayed with new feelings. It was clear Emily was becoming a person in many ways like other people, only more so. Her happies were happier. Her sads were sadder. Her thoughts were deeper. Her desire, her desires were stronger. And oh, there was so much that Emily loved. My heart grows light as fast, so fast that I could mount a grasshopper and gallop around the world and not fatigue him any. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Every day, Emily's life rippled with new joys and swayed with new feelings. It was clear Emily was becoming a person in many ways, like other people, only more so. Her happies were happier, her sads were sadder, her thoughts were deeper, her desires were stronger, and oh, there was so much that Emily loved. My heart grows light so fast that I could mount a grasshopper and gallop around the world and not fatigue him any. <laughs> Most of all, Emily loved books. The strongest friends of the soul, books. <laughs> yes, indeed. The strongest soul. The strongest friends of the soul, books. <laughs> oh, good to see you, Quincy. Good to see you and Lynette. It's been a minute out there in Marin. Grandmother shared her love of Emily Dixon with me when I was little. My grandma was also named Emily. Oh, love that connection. Special connection for sure. Thank you for sharing. Most of all, Emily loved Bucks. The strongest friends of the soul. Bucks. <laughs> to Emily, every book was an adventure, a distant journey on a sea of words. And if a book was forbidden, well... That didn't stop Emily. Like the book she wanted that Austin snuggled into, that Austin smuggled into the house and hid inside the piano, Emily rushed it up to her room and read it in delicious secrecy. <laughs> Every story she read at night by candlelight or in the garden's midday sun was a new passion, a ray of light. <laughs> Yes, indeed. I love it. But there were shadows too. In the 1800s, sorrow was a daily companion. The sorrow of diseases incurable, accidents untreatable, and deaths too soon, too close. All this frightened Emily and flooded her mind with questions. Hmm. but there were shadows too. In the 1800s, sorrow was a daily companion. The sorrow of diseases incurable, accidents untreatable, and deaths too soon, too close. All this frightened Emily and flooded her mind with questions. Hmm. Emily tried to find answers at home. She looked for answers at her church. She searched for answers at school. Hmm. Emily tried to find answers at home. She looked for answers at her church. She searched for answers at school. But everywhere she looked, she was told to obey without asking, to believe without knowing why. So she began to put her faith in what she could see and understand. In the name of the bee and of the butterfly and of the breeze. Amen. Yes, indeed. Emily searched for answers at church. Sexual answers at school. 
But everywhere she looked, she was told to obey without asking, to believe without knowing why. So she began to put her faith in what she could see and understand. In the name of the bee and of the butterfly and of the breeze. Amen. When her very religious school principal separated the class into hopers and no hopers, Emily was put in the group without hope. Yet Emily did have hope, her own kind. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. Hmm. Hmm. When her very religious school principal separated her class into hopers and no hopers, Emily was put in the group without hope. Yet Emily did have hope, her own kind. Hope is the thing that, with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words, without the words, and never stops at all. So with her hope, she sought her truth. And so, with her hope, she sought the truth. I am out with lanterns looking for myself. Oh. I am out with lanterns looking for myself. <laughs> Then, like rays of sun breaking through the clouds, her thoughts and feelings started to come to her as words, new words, her own words. No. <laughs> yes, I am out here with lanterns looking for myself. Then, like rays of sun breaking through, breaking through the clouds, her thoughts and feelings started to come to her as words, new words, her own words. The robins, bumblebees, and daisies she loved. The dark diseases and frightening deaths. The unknowable God and mysterious heaven all came pouring out as poems. Things are budding and springing and singing. Answers she couldn't find in other people, she started to find in herself. I have been dreaming, dreaming a golden dream with eyes all the while wide open. <laughs> I love that. I have been dreaming, dreaming a golden dream with eyes all the while wide open. Yes, answers she couldn't find in other people, she started to find in herself. <laughs> her poems soothed her sadness, gave her strength, set her free. With the power of her words and the freedom of her imagination, she tasted spices in foreign lands and hid inside a flower. She leaned against the sun, dwelt in a house of possibilities, and rode a carriage to the ends of time. Oh. <laughs> her poems soothed her sadness, gave her strength, set her free. With the power of her words and the freedom of her imagination, she tasted spices in foreign lands and hid inside a flower. She leaned against the sun, dwelt in a house of possibilities, and rode a carriage to the ends of time. <laughs> she became a bird, a worm, a ghost, a ghost, a god. A beggar, a king, a somebody, a nobody. Yeah, she became all things. I am nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there is a pair of us. Don't tell. They would banish us. 
you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public, how public like a frog to tell your name the live long June to an alarming bark. <laughs> she became a bird, a worm, a ghost, a god, a beggar, a king, a somebody, a nobody. I am nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there is a pair of us. Don't tell. They would banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How public like a frog. To tell your name the live long June to an admiring bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she called her poems my letter to the world that never wrote to me. And so with her words, her mind, Emily dove into the darkest depths of the sea and of sadness. She rose up to the glowing heights of the sun and of joy. Emily saw the inner world was bigger than all the world outside. The brain is wider than the sky. For put them side by side, the one the other will contain with case with ease and you beside. Mm. <laughs> she called her poems a letter to the world that never wrote to me. And so with her words, her mind, Emily dove into the darkest depths of the sea and of sadness. She rose up to the glowing heights of the sun and of joy. Emily saw the inner world was bigger than all the world outside. The brain is wider than the sky, for put them side by side, the one the other will contain with, with ease and you beside. <laughs> That's such a thought, beautiful thought. Emily spent more and more time in her room, writing, creating. She ventured out less and less. Exhilaration is within. As Emily's inner world grew bigger, her outer world grew smaller. Yes, there were things she still loved in the worldly world. She loved her gardens, the bees, the springtime, and the wind combing its fingers through the trees. And of course, her family, a few very special friends, her big dog, Carlo, and children. Emily always loved children, but most people she saw rarely or not at all. <laughs> yes, as Emily's world grew bigger, her outer, her inner world grew bigger, her outer world grew smaller. Yes, there were things she loved. She still loved in the worldly world. She loved her gardens, the bees, the springtime, and the wind coming its fingers through the trees. And of course, her family, a few very special friends, her big dog, Carlo, and children. Emily always loved children, but most people, well, she saw rarely or not at all. <laughs> Emily began to dress in white, white like clouds, like the foam on a wave, white like a cocoon in her room from which butterflies were born. Butterflies that were poems that flew with Emily on wings of words. People in the town said Emily was weird. Emily was strange, but Emily didn't care what they said of her. Her world was somewhere else. My country is true. Oh. My country is true. <laughs> Emily never stopped writing, never stopped exploring. With every day and every poem, she saw more, discovered more, traveled deeper, soared higher for the rest of her life. On a Saturday in May, 1886, 
Emily died, slipping into the eternity she had wondered about and written about all her life. Then something wonderful and amazing happened. Emily's sister, Vinnie, opened drawers, trunks, boxes, and closets and found hundreds and hundreds of Emily's poems, more than any anyone ever imagined. Poems that on the wings of Emily's words flew out and away into the future and around the world. And here we are, over a hundred years later, still learning from this beautiful mind. Today, almost every library, every bookstore, every school, in every city, state, and country has Emily's poems, Emily's words, Emily's letters to each of us. The world is sleeping. We must be crowing cocks and singing larks and a rising sun to awake her. And in those words, can you hear Emily's voice echoing through the years, speaking to you, to all of us, who are brave enough to take a pen in hand, to look deep and write what we discover. I dwell in possibility, a fairer house than prose, more numerous of windows, superior for doors. Of visitors, the fairest, for occupation, this, the spreading wide my narrow hands to gather paradise. Oh. <laughs> Yes. So beautiful. I dwell in possibility, a fairer house than prose, more numerous of windows, superior for doors, of visitors the fairest, for occupation, this, the spreading wide my narrow hands to gather paradise. <laughs> Oh, and that is the end of our story today. I just love this so much. And uh, um, if you manage to get the book too, there's a little bit on the back too, just more information, discovering the world through poetry and also um, about Emily's poetry. And I'll read this part and then I'll skip over um, to read um, the author's note, because I think there's information in there that we would all appreciate. So here we go about Emily's poetry. Many of Emily's poems are like puzzles or little mysteries, full of hints and riddles, visions, secrets, and truths waiting to be discovered and experienced. Each one is inviting you to enter it and go on a thought journey with Emily. No one fully understands or gets everything out of Emily's poems on the first reading. Often, if you reread a poem of Emily's a month later, a year later, many years later, you will see and find whole new things, new messages, new ideas, new currents that never seemed to be there before. As you evolve, so do Emily's poems. That's how full and rich they are. And that's why so many people fall in love with Emily's poems for their entire lives. I am one of those people. Perhaps you will be too. And it goes on to give us, you know, just some thoughts here and books about Emily Dickinson as well. But let's skip over to um, the author's note, because I thought that one too has um, some powerful words for us. So it says, and this is um, the author, Jennifer Byrne. Every writer, every poet, every reader will probably have their own definition of poetry. Here is mine. Poetry is a deep exploration of each subject the poet approaches. An exploration that starts with the poet looking, feeling, thinking, wondering, imagining, discovering. Then, and this is the magic of poetry, through that exploration, words begin to emerge. Words flow into the writer's mind, words that become phrases, sentences, ideas, new ones that no one has ever thought or said before. Now the writer begins to play with those words, arranging them and rearranging, adding, subtracting, 
building, sculpting until everything feels just right. Until their creation feels complete. That is the birth of a poem. I will let Emily end this book here. I will let Emily end this book. Here are two stanzas from one of my favorite poems of hers, in which she tells us how important she felt it was to be a poet. And here's Emily's list. I reckon when I count all, first poets, then the sun, then summer, then the heaven of God, and then the list is done. But looking back, the first so seems to comprehend the whole. The others look a needless show. So I write poets all. <laughs> I just love that. Thank you so much for joining in Story Time. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, yes, on on wings of words, the extraordinary life of Emily Dickinson. And this one is written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrations by Becca Stantlander. And we were reading this one with permission of the publishers, Chronicle Books of San Francisco. Thank you so much for joining in. And I hope today too that this has sparked you know, that creative bit of you today and just um, pushes you today to go on and create, go on and, you know, like explore, discover, look into those inner depths. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. I'll catch you on the other side of this short break when we're back for more Storytime. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> Hello, I'm Olalu Ogunyemi, officer in the United States Marine Corps and author of Crow from the Shadow. You are tuned in with my brother on Storytime with Mr. LaMotta. Enjoy and God bless. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Ola Olu Ogunyemi. Yes, if you've not checked out Billy Dipper's Time to Shine, well, go, go, go. Well, after this, go and check it out. Billy Dipper's Time to Shine, Crow from the Shadow, Horace the Horsefly. So many wonderful books from Ola Olu Ogunyemi. Thank you, my brother. And um, I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are today. Thank you so much for joining in. That was our story for today. That was the wonderful book that we were reading, Emily Dickinson. Yes, The Extraordinary Life of Emily Dickinson on Wings of Words, written by Jennifer Byrne, illustrations by Becca Statlander, and read with permission of Chronicle Books of San Francisco. A big thank you to them indeed for allowing us to share such amazing books here on Storytime. Tomorrow, we're joined by a beautiful book. We bring a beautiful book from Familius Publishing. This one coming back to Storytime. And yes, it is another poem from another great, Robert Frost. And uh, this one is illustrated by Vivian Minica, and it is called Stopping by Words on a Snowy Evening. So join us for this one. Yes, I know it's springtime, but there's still snow. There's still snow somewhere. <laughs> stopping by words on a snowy evening join us for that one tomorrow i'm excited to share it and bring it back to story time and a big thank you too to familias publishing for allowing us to bring that one to story time let us see who was with us this morning ready to enjoy those beautiful stories thank you so much for being here absolutely love it pamela courtney thank you for being here braylon said poetry is using a creative mind in a big way to make people really see and feel what the story is about oh my goodness i love that chad says poetry makes you feel like you're a part of the world in your imagination oh beautiful beautiful thank you so much for sharing that i i will be taking these words and putting them somewhere so i can reference them um every so often thank you so much for joining in thank you braylon and chad for sharing those those thoughts from your mind absolutely appreciate you thank you so much for joining in braylon says he's not sure he's ready for emily dickinson <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Keep exploring. And um, I hope that I, I think you're ready. I think you're ready. And I hope that time, you know, like the time that you feel ready comes soon. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your honesty. Appreciate that. <laughs> Robert Frost, this was an absolute favorite for me as a child. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. And I actually Oh, I will have um, a recommendation for you, Braylon. I don't know. And Chad, um, I see. I know I have that copy here somewhere, but uh, it's, uh, what is it called? 
uh, Love That Dog. It's a beautiful book, Love That Dog. It's a beautiful way to go into, um, into, into poetry. And um, it highlights these, well, there's um, Stopping by Woods, of course, Robert Frost and um, William C. Williams. There's so many more. And I'll try and find it today so I can show you tomorrow, at least send a picture to you of that book. It is beautiful. Um, love that cat. I love that dog. And then the sequel to that was Hate That Cat. So find that one. I will, I will find it so you can see the cover. But it is a beautiful one and a beautiful way to, to just explore um, more poetry. So thank you so much for joining in. Absolutely appreciate you. And um, thanks for being here. To everybody else that was joining us, good morning to you one more time. Owen, thank you so much. I'll be waiting to see those toys. Thank you so much for joining in. And of course, Christine Costa, thank you so much for joining us here on Storytime. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful Wednesday indeed. Absolutely appreciate you all the way out in El Salvador. Thank you so much for joining us, Doreen. And we hope to see you again on another Storytime Live. But of course, if you cannot be, you cannot be here with us live, I hope that you can always join us for the recordings at storytimewithmisslimada.com, at Storytime with Miss Limada on Facebook and YouTube. Megan and Ari, thank you so much for joining in Storytime today and love it. I see lots and lots of love from Ari. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We love you and hugs to you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely love it. Glad you are here with us. Yes, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of love from Ari and we send it right back to you as well. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. And yes, indeed, thank you to everybody that was joining us. Quincy, good to see you. Good to see you here. And of course, Lynette, thank you for joining us and thank you so much for sharing um, that connection that you have to Emily Dickinson's work. My grandmother shared her love of Emily Dickinson with me when I was little. My grandma was also named Emily. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for being here with us. Braylon, Chad, Auntie Pam, Auntie Anne. Thank you for joining us out there in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Hopefully this book helped you warm up just a little bit more. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely appreciate you. Love that dog. Thank you for the wreck. Yes, love that dog. Yellow cover. And then hate that cat. Red cover. It is a beautiful one. Um, I would say you would be done with it in, in a day or two. It is a really beautiful book. Um, uh, and I think fourth grade, fifth grade, like you would love it. Everybody really, it just breaks down so much. And there's activities too. It allows you to kind of play around with some of the, 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 the poems in there and try out on your own as well. So um, check it out. I think I have extra copies here. I will find them and I will try and um, see if maybe I can send them to you. Thank you so much for joining in Storytime. Please remember too that we have a lot of events coming up, a lot to look forward to, including Marietta Apollonia will be here with us on Storytime. I am excited for her visit with her brand new book, Jack the library cat. They will be here. We'll be doing art. We'll be in conversation. And of course, we'll be having fun together. So join in for that one coming very shortly on May 11th. It's getting closer and closer. And of course, too, we do have the Children's Fairyland uh, Children's Book Festival happening June 3rd. I will be there. Come join us. Come have fun with us. Tell your friends who are in the Bay where we'll be on that day, June Third, come and join us. Lots of fun guaranteed. And this week, as we continue to celebrate, you know, Poetry Month, commemorate National Poetry Month, um, those words ring true. They stay true. You know, like we hope poetry is powerful. Poetry is beautiful. And may you all feel a little more alive with every poem shared. Yes. And of course, today we, we have an excerpt there from uh, the James Baldwin, um, uh, um, poem amen that we just shared and says no i don't feel death coming i feel death going having thrown up his arms for a moment yes i hope that the poetry that we're reading this week makes you feel a little more alive yes that much more alive and our poem for the day of course is amen by james baldwin and this one says no i don't feel i don't feel death coming i feel death going having thrown up his arms for the moment. Yes, living frustrated. I feel like I know him better than I did. Those arms held me for a while. And when we meet again, there will be that secret knowledge between us. 
<laughs> love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much for joining in Story Time. Absolutely appreciate you. I'll see you again tomorrow for more Story Time. And tomorrow we're back with stopping by words on a snowy evening. Thank you so much for being here, friends. Much love, hugs to each and every one of you. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>